Good morning. My name is John Snow, and I'm your host for today's webinar. For those of you who have viewed these in the past, welcome back. And for those of you who are attending for the first time, uh, welcome and thank you for your time today. At the beginning of COVID, we decided to uh, start providing webinars as a way to reach out to our staff, our partners, and most importantly, our clients. It's a way of us, a uh, way for us to stay in touch uh, and allows us the ability to share our products and services. Um, during this period, uh, we realized that virtual selling and virtual communication is becoming more common every day. And as such, we plan to continue to provide these services going forward uh, well beyond uh, the pandemic. At the last webinar, we heard from uh, Chris McQueen, who spoke to us about class one product, and Lorraine Langston, who spoke to us about class two product. Uh, today, uh, we have Chris Simdikitas. Chris is gonna speak to us about class three product today. Um, class three product is now uh, a huge part of our market, representing over 50% of our market across the five classes of trucks. And there is a variety of models, uh, shapes and sizes that Chris is gonna speak to us about today. So uh, without further ado, uh, Chris, welcome. Uh, with just a brief introduction for each one. And if you see something that, that piques your interest that you think might fit your application or you just have more questions about it, uh, you can reach out to your local Lifto branch and ask to speak to, to one of us, you know, your local sales rep and we'll be more than happy to go into, into more detail, more in-depth uh, information. So we'll start off with uh, electric pallet jack, uh, also known as a walkie. Uh, our model is the 8HBW23. It comes in a 4,500 pound capacity. Uh, the standard forks for, for something like this is usually a 48 by 27. That fits you know, most pallets that are being used out there, whether they're the, the blue chat pallets, uh, most pallets are 48 by 40. So these are good forks. If you need something different because of your application, certain printers, I know uh, some industries use specific pallets that are you know, for their, for their industry only. Uh, there are various forks that come with it, different lengths and also different uh, width settings, overall outside dimensions. So we can help you there. Um, there's an electronic brake release on that. What that is, is if the truck does fail for whatever reason, uh, and it's stuck in a, in a trailer, uh, stuck in, your, in an aisle somewhere that's not convenient for you, uh, the electronic brake release will allow you to literally just pull it away, similar that you would do with a, with a pump truck. Uh, you're not gonna use it to operate anymore. It's just really to get it out of the way until you can get a technician on site. So that's a nice little feature for you. Um, also, I uh, talked about the, uh, the fork length. So there's also backrest. So if you have loads that aren't as stable as you'd like them to be, you can order backrest for them up to 72 inches long. If you have a you know, more um, uh, rough application, um, if you work in freezers or, or coolers, there is cold storage options that you can add to this unit. And if it's really extreme, you can go as far as, uh, as galvanized chassis as well. Um, the nine inch battery compartment just allows you to put in a bigger battery pack if you need to do longer run times, you know, in between charges. But the packs that you generally will see on something like this is uh, four six volt batteries that are wired in series to make a 24 volt system for you. They typically will have uh, an onboard charger with a 110 plug-in, 110 volt plug-in. So you can pretty much plug anywhere in the in the warehouse. Uh, even if you take the truck, uh, take the pallet truck on a delivery truck and you're you know you're waiting somewhere else and they're kind enough to let you use their your power, you can do so there too. So the charger is an opportunity charge and you can you can charge as you need it. So we don't want you draining it with this type of system. Um, and you're gonna have a flooded lead acid battery, which is the least expensive way to go. Uh, if you're again back on those trucks and you're bouncing around the streets uh, or if you're not confident that your your people are going to maintain the battery watering and, and such you can upgrade to a, a maintenance free pack 
maintenance free meaning the battery not having to water it with a with a glass mat substance or you can go all the way up to a, a gel pack they're all still four six volt batteries uh, and they can be replaced with the same when when the batteries fail um, if you don't like the current battery that you have and you want to try something different you can just got to make sure the technician reprograms your truck to let it know what type of battery you're um, you're using so um, you also have a click to creep feature on this which is a great feature to have for tight uh, areas like docks lift gates um, a lot of delivery guys will use it you can pinwheel with it so with the handle up you would click twice on the on the um, on the toggle and that would put it into a creep mode and then you can actually operate that with the handle up in a, in an 85 inch aisle so very versatile and very slow so it's very safe and then when you want to come out of it you just leave it 10 seconds later it'll go back to normal speed or you can click back out of it with two more two more clicks on the throttle okay um, so that's some of the features on it and if if um, the Toyota product is a little bit out of your budget um, or if all you've ever used really is pump trucks, you're a very light duty, low volume type of business, uh, but you're just tired of pushing things around manually, then a good entry level machine would be the Toramax. Uh, it is a Toyota product. Uh, this particular one is made in Taiwan. Uh, so the I wouldn't want to say that, you know, the quality isn't as good, but the fact is that it's not. So, you know, Toyota's Toyota, and if you want the best, that's what you're going to go with. It's going to be a lot smoother. It's going to be a lot quieter. Um, you're going to have better warranty with the Toyota product. And some of the parts are, are different, and that's better as well. But like I said, if you've all if all you ever had is a pump truck, then for you, this is this is just perfectly fine. And it is a little bit cheaper as well, so it helps you out with your budget. Um, a little bit less on the capacity, 4,000 pounds versus the 4,500. Same forks. Uh, with this one, you have the option to choose 42-inch forks, but that's it. Um, there's not going to be, I mean, you can change the different battery packs after these ones fail, but coming from the factory, you're only going to get the wet cell option. However, it does have a watering system on this particular model. So we would provide you with the watering gun. You have to provide your own hose. And you could you can water this pack uh, directly using the the watering system, so it takes away a little bit of the of the manual labor. Um, I would not recommend this to a customer who already has used uh, Toyota product in the past, just because I think they're, they're comparing it to it. They're not going to be as happy as the Toyota product. I, I repeat myself again that if they've never owned one, uh, they're not sure if they need one. You know, they just want to give something a shot, then that's when I would uh, try and provide this to a customer. And if you're a customer out there listening, same thing. You know, it's, it all depends on your comfort level and your, and your budget. Uh, if you're looking for something a little bit heavier, you're going to step up to the 8HBW30. 6,000 pound capacity um, operates the same way. It's a walk behind the, uh, it's just built a little bit, you know, more durable, obviously having to, to handle the 6,000 pounds. Uh, there's there's greasable bearings on this that you can you can order different uh, different wheels and load wheels that you can order as well depending on your application and the battery compartment is a 13 inch as standard and you can go to a smaller one if if you know you're trying to get into a slightly smaller aisle width you can get down to uh, I believe it's a seven and a nine inch battery compartment but usually you're going to see this because otherwise you'd be going back to the HBW 23 really. Um, rather than paying the, the price difference. So this is more if you need that 6,000 pounds, really. Okay. And you can order it rather than with the key. You can order it with the keypad, just like on the 8HB23. I didn't mention that. Uh, it is keypad controlled so that you can have different pin numbers for different operators, keeping people out uh, of, of use for people that aren't certified or you don't want, you know, drivers, visitors showing up at your place and trying to use your equipment. Okay. And... Uh, after that, if you're getting into bigger warehouses, distribution centers where there's long runs and you don't want to be walking, it's all about productivity. Uh, so anything like, you know, over 75 feet, you know, you don't want to be doing that back and forth all day. So you're going to move up to the end rider. So uh, operates the same as the, as the walk behinds, 
that you that we just saw the six thousand pound but you're going to have a solid platform on the back you can ride it from either side so if you're left or right handed it doesn't matter uh for those long runs you've got the the grab handle uh and it's got controls on it as well so you have a little stability stability arm there to hold on to uh, does come with power steering as well as an option which i would highly recommend and if you're going to use it uh, as a picker uh, there is an option to have a, a coast control and, and jog buttons on there so you can actually lock that handle down because it does have to be down in order for it to, to operate and move forward so you can lock it down and just hit the jog buttons and literally bump it along the the row as you're as you're picking so you don't have to constantly you know either step up onto the platform or grab the handle and bring it down so just Toyota thinking about you know ergonomics and and repeat motions of, of your your hand and shoulders uh, so that'll help you out with that and then there's a bunch of different uh, batteries that you can that you can choose there depending on your shifts and and run times that are required uh, you can do fork lengths as long as 144 inches so you it's more common to see 96 but uh, if you're not doing the standard ones but you can go up to 144 so if you're just handling the same product and you're going back and forth uh, from from one end of a, of a warehouse to another, you want to be able to handle two or even three pallets at a time, then this is going to definitely help with your productivity. Uh, if you're going off the ground, then we're moving into the stackers. So if you notice, the, the back end of this machine is basically the same as the 8HBW23, same handle, um, same controls. So you know, operators would be very familiar with it if they're already using the walkie. The difference is going to be that now you have a mast on there and obviously you've got the straddle legs that you can see on the side that are for stability. So uh, if you're either stacking skids or going into some low level racking, then you're going to move up to, to the stacker, the 8H, sorry, the 8BW S10 or 13. So it's a two or a 2,500 pound capacity. Just note that if you do go to 143 inches, which is the max for this, this machine, you are going to derate down to about 1,600 pounds. So this is once again entry level. I would say uh, low low volume, low heights, and and low weight. Obviously, um, the, the the legs are four inches wide. The strata legs. So you this does not reach out this particular model. So you do have to accommodate the machine by leaving you know five inch gaps between your skids. You can't block stack. You can't put the skids up against each other. Or this machine will not work for you. So depending again on how your warehouse is set up or whether you're willing to adjust your layout, this machine may or may not be for you. Um, you can and and if you're yeah if you've got like eight foot beams, uh, this is not a machine for you because you're not going to have room to leave in between uh, your pallets. So you got to have at least nine foot beams or no racking at all where you can control where you're placing those those pallets. And uh, as for, the legs are adjustable, so we'll set them for you at the factory. If you change your pallets or if you decide you don't want to pick them up from the 40-inch side anymore, you're going to turn them the other way for whatever reason. Uh, it's not something that you can do on the fly, but you know you can. You, a technician can jack up the truck, pull a few pins, make the adjustments, and, and reset it for you. So it's not an everyday type of adjustment, but it can be adjusted if, you're, if your overall warehouse needs change. Um, that's it for that one. Now, if you're going into heavier weights or you need to go higher, then you're going to go to our industrial model, 6BWS. Um, that's going to have a capacity up to 4,000 pounds. This one will have a, uh, a mast height of up to 189 inches, which is more of a traditional three-stage uh, mast that you would see on a forklift. So it'll allow you to go to you know three high, maybe even four high, depending how tall your 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 pallets are. Uh, so it's a lot more flexible in that regard. Um, um, it's got it can operate in a seven foot or an eight foot aisle. So it's still still a little bit better than uh, your your conventional reach truck, stand on reach truck, and obviously it's a little bit easier to to use. So, but again, going back, you know, comparing it to the class two stand on reach truck this is going to be for once again lower uh, lower volume where productivity is not you know the main thing you're looking for you're just looking to be able to get 
heavier stuff off the ground and, and stacked or into racking. Um, you can you can get industrial batteries for this one as well. So you're gonna look you're looking at longer run times than your you know your APWS. Uh, and sorry, and going back to that one, if I can just do that. This one here, you you want to make sure that we're ordering uh, maintenance free batteries for you because the there's no way to get in and swing the six volt batteries out in order to water them because the mast is there. So the only if you do get water batteries, you're you're gonna have to pull the whole pack out, and that's not something that you want to do. So with this machine, um, you're also able to get a side shifter, which on the entry level one you cannot. So if that's important for you as well. It makes it a little bit easier to operate the the machine in the, especially in the tighter aisle so you're not going back and forth um after that if reaching is required you can upgrade to the 6bw r15 it comes in a 3,000 pound model only it can operate in eight foot aisles once again lower output warehouses um but less expensive than you know going to the conventional uh reach truck so it, it, and you, that's why we say you got to talk to the sales professional. Let us figure out what your volumes are like, what you, what kind of you know productivity you're looking for, and you can save yourself some money and and stick to a reach truck. Sorry, to a stacker versus spending the extra money on on a reach. Um, I think another slide here. Yeah. So very important on this one is that you cannot adjust the legs. They are welded to the body. You get one shot at it, you know, make sure that you know what you're using. Sales reps, make sure you know that you're you're measuring correctly uh, based on the customer's needs. Because once this is built, you're, those, are, those are your legs, okay? Uh, if this is very rare, um, I've never sold one. I've been here, you know, 14 years, um, but it's still out there and it's a great option if the stacker doesn't work for you because of the straddle legs and uh, a forklift doesn't work for you because you just don't have that 10 and a half 11 12 foot aisle for uh, you know three and four wheel trucks then this counterbalance stacker you notice there's no straddle legs so it's very narrow you can block stack you can go down narrow aisles with it or sort of narrow like narrow aisles of, of pallets with it um, and it can operate in a nine ten foot aisle so as long as you only need to go up to four thousand pounds and again, you, you may derate with taller mass, so be careful with that. But you can go up to 4,000 pounds and still work in a, in a smaller aisle and not have to worry about the strata legs and things like that. Um, moving on to back to the ground. So no lifting here is our 24-volt tow tractor, uh, capacity of 10,000 pounds, uh, multiple hitches, depending on what type of cart you might be carrying. And if need be, we can, we can and you know have done in the past customized hitches to to match up to whatever it is that you're pulling it could be a single cart it could be a, a train of carts um, you'll see these in again long distance hauls where you're moving product from one end to the other whether it's uh, supplying uh, bringing finished goods to to receiving maybe to shipping or or um, you know bringing supplies uh, to different lines you know things like that um, it's stand-up rider it's power steering uh, you know, very versatile, tight turning, uh, and you can you can walk through it. So if you're riding along a wall on one end, you know, you can park it, jump off on the left side, jump on the right. So you're not limited in that sense. Um, if you're gonna be if you're gonna be working with something a little bit heavier, so again, because of capacity, you can go to our 48 volt truck. This one I've seen like in post offices. Uh, Automotive places where again they're making long runs. You can have you can have tool cribs on the back uh, as well as the you know the train that you're pulling. So it's it's versatile in that sense. You can get it with uh, true air tires if you're if you're outside. You know you can see these at the airports as well. Things like that. If you're going in between buildings, um, you know more capacity, higher speeds, that sort of thing. So it's you know it comes back down to to volumes and and productivity. And there is a stand-up version of this as well. So if you're a little bit on and off more more often, you might you might want to stand versus versus the sit down. So you have those two options. And if uh, now this next one here, it's not really a class three. 
but because it is part of the, the tow tractor family, I thought I'd throw it in for everybody. Uh, these ones you're really going to see more at the airport. You're pulling, you know, big machinery, uh, literally airplanes. You're pulling huge finished product that maybe you're trying to line up with a crane or something. Um, or bringing it outside so that a larger forklift can can pick it up and put it where it needs to be, that sort of thing. So, you know, again, I've never sold one of these, uh, but there are customers out there that, that use them. If you're one of them, please reach out. We can help you out. And also another non-Class 3 product, but it's electric and probably, you know, closest to the Class 3 as far as, you know, what, what they do in their applications is the scissor lift. So Aichi is another Toyota company, uh, Toyota-owned company, uh, very well known in in, in um, Japan and Asia and in, in Europe, and you know starting to to be sold here as well. So we carry the scissor lift line here. You can get anything from 19 to 32 foot uh, platform heights. Um, this is a the one you're seeing here is a two person uh, scissor lift. So if you're if you're working on something with a with a colleague, something that needs to be, you know, whether you're doing piping, whether you're doing electrical work, you're working on lights, that sort of thing. That's where you're going to use this. You're not doing this for for material handling. You're not using it to pick or anything like that because it is it is a lot slower. So it's not really you know geared towards that sort of thing. It's more of a more of a maintenance thing. Customers in the past have always rented them. You know now you know you're, you're it's it's. It's something that more and more people are, are buying and they're just having it there on the side for, for when they need it. Um, you can extend the platform again if, if, the, if you need to you know, reach out a little bit. Uh, you don't want, it doesn't go too far, but it's still stable. It's safe. I've been up. It's a little scary sometimes, but, uh, but it's definitely safe. Uh, if you're going through man doors or any low, low height areas, the, the, uh, this is now an, not an option anymore. It's actually on all of them. Uh, all the all the rails and the control uh, panel will fold down, allowing you to get through through that man door. Okay, and very tight turning again as well, and uh, all AC drive motors, like like pretty much all of the equipment that we talked about. There are some of the older ones are DC motors, but for the most part, they're all AC, very efficient. And if uh, if the two person one is not for you, you're looking for something a little bit smaller, then there is a vertical mast uh, unit. It basically only goes 12 or 16 feet. Uh, it's geared for one person to go up at a time. And again, it's just a little bit cheaper. If you have no need for two people going up or you don't, you're not going to be working on on on, on a wider area, uh, then this is a this is a good one for you as well. Um, and that's uh that's it for all the class three product. Again, there's quite a few models. Um, there's a lot more information about each one. If, if we've piqued your interest, if you think it might be something for you, um, but you're not 100% sure, then ask us to come out. Um, if you're still accepting visitors during this time, we'll, we'll be happy to do so. Um, or we can send out machines uh, for you to demo and, and try it in your, in your facility so you have a better idea of what they can or cannot do. And of course, we can, we can set up you know, private virtual appointments as well with yourself, your team, if need be. Chris. Thanks very much for putting that information together for us. That was a uh, that was a lot of uh, there's a lot of products in that in that segment of our uh, of our offering. So great stuff. Um, we do have a, a question from the group. There was some questions that uh, were uh, w which we mentioned earlier that you were allowed to ask. So Chris, um, a question is related to why this market is so big. Um, I know that it represents over 50% of our market, but this has changed over the years. Why do you think this market is uh, so important? Uh, I think, number one, I think because, you know, people are looking to try and go electric as much as possible, uh, you know, for, for the environment, for, for their own environment in their, in their warehouses where their, you know, people are working. Um, and also they're realizing that, you know, maybe everybody doesn't need a forklift, uh, and, and, you know, make it work in their environment. There are smaller pieces of equipment that can work specifically for their application. Uh, they're less expensive. Um, and, and especially for the, the mid to small sized customers who don't have the, the need for, for volume and, and productivity, right? 
not that they don't want to be productive, but they just don't have the need to to go to that bigger, faster machine to get the job done. They're they're more than able to do it with a stacker, with a walkie, you know, things like that. So definitely. Good. OK. Yeah. The the other question was actually, which I think you already touched on, was related to demos and if we had demos available. Um, yeah. And if I could just add that uh, we we encourage uh, uh, demos all the time. We think everybody should have the opportunity to try something new. Um, so we encourage that whenever possible. Um, so the answer would be absolutely yes. Chris, did you want to add anything regarding demos? Uh, no, just uh, they, they work. Um, and sometimes, you know, they work when they don't work, meaning that it's it's better to know, you know, you try something out for a day or two and realize that that's not the one for you. We'd rather have that happen than, than sell a piece of equipment that uh, that somebody guessed on and, you know, have a, a, a customer that's not satisfied in the end. So if it, if we know it doesn't work, great. We'll, we'll look at another solution then. Right. So agreed. Absolutely. Great. Good. OK, so this this concludes our webinar today. I'd like to thank uh, Chris for taking the time to put this together. It was uh, did a great job and and a lot of information to uh, to look at and consider. Um, I'd like to take the time to thank everyone for joining and uh, and look forward to seeing you at future webinars. On behalf of Lifto, uh, I wish you and your families uh, all the best. Stay safe, stay positive, and uh, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.